Okay guys, so what we're going to do today is a bit of 3D modeling um, using 3ds Max and we're going to look at doing some vehicle modeling. So um, if you're just starting out, you want to create some uh, vehicles for, uh, this is going to be more aimed towards games development because we're looking at kind of lower poly models. Um, but if you wanted to progress on to doing more high poly detailed stuff, then this would be a good way to, um, to get started with some of these lower detailed uh, models. So what I've done is I've had a look online and I've got a model which I think works really well for starting out. Um, uh, it's from this low poly lab. They actually have quite a few other ones if you want to see them in their kind of wireframe form like this one. So if you're trying to kind of work out how to create something, trying to find a model where you can see the actual, um, you know, the wireframe of the model. That's a really good way of kind of working out how it's been created and how you could recreate something like that yourself and then kind of create your own version from that and that kind of thing. Okay, so you, know, you could look them up and there's, there's a few other ones if you wanted something a little bit different. Okay, so I've got this one and uh, another one, another view here, like a side view. Okay, just so that we can see a bit of the uh, makeup of the model from a few different angles or a couple, should I say. All right. So let's get started. So we're in 3ds Max 2024. Um, we've got our four different viewports. Um, we're going to start off in the perspective view. Um, and uh, we are going to make it use of lots of different views with this. Um, OK, so let's get started. So when you begin, uh, you want to start from your primitive shape. Uh, in this case, it's going to be a box. And I'm going to kind of start from this kind of central section of the car here and then I'm going to use my modeling tools to kind of extrude out from that and modify the, the shape further. So if we start with a box, um, I'm not using measurements or anything, I'm just kind of doing it by eye. Okay, I want to come over here and turn on my edged faces so that I can see the makeup of the model. Um, I want to start with three by three by three segments. Uh, reason being is because if you kind of divide this up, so it's like one, two, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do every edge there. So it's like one, two, three main sections within that, and then one, two, three main sections going down. All right, so that's where I've gotten that from. Um, and then the width. Oops, let's get the right <laughs> settings there. So yeah, you want to get it kind of a right width of the car. It doesn't really matter too much because we can modify that further. Cool, once we're happy with that shape, I'm going to right click it and convert it to an editable poly so that I can modify this further. I can access all these sub settings here. So vertex edge border polygon element. And I'm gonna start by going to the polygon selection and holding control, I can select multiple things at once. So I'm gonna select those front sections there going to get my extrude tool and I'm going to extrude this out. Um, so first of all that you know that's not far enough out for this full section of the, the kind of bonnet of the car there. Um, with extrude one thing I see people doing all the time is you know they've not quite got it as far as they want so they keep extruding like this keep on doing that until it's as far as they want. Problem is now you've got all this extra geometry and lines in here which which are going to cause confusion later on. So you don't want to do it like that. You don't always need to use these tools. So if I turn extrude off, I can just get my move tool and in the X axis, make sure it's constrained just to that. Um, you know, you can move it to where you want it to be. So then you are not get a whole bunch of extra edges in here. Okay, something like that will be fine um, for now. I want to do the same with the back. So let's select those six at the back. Do another extrusion. This time it's not going to be quite as far, kind of in that section there. Um, so something like that would be okay for now. Okay, great. That's, you know, that's a good start. <laughs> Doesn't look much like, like a car yet, but it's getting somewhere. Um, so what I'm going to do now is come out of this perspective view so that I can see all my other views here. All right, they don't quite add up. Like I know that is not the front, even though it says front. Um, I know that's not the left, even though, you know, it says it does, but it doesn't really matter too much. As long as you've got your views and you kind of see what they are, then we're good. 
So I'm now going to go to the vertex selection and I'm going to look at this side view here. Let's bring that up bigger. So looking at the side profile of the car, I want to get that slope of the windscreen and that slope of uh, the back window as well. Okay, so I'm going to marquee select those vertexes there. Now I'll just pop out of here just so I can show you what I mean by marquee selecting. If I marquee select, which is clicking and dragging, it's going to select everything within that sort of dotted square. Okay, so it's going to select all that whole row of vertices. So if I move them in the x axis, it's going to move them all. Can you see that? If I just sort of clicked on one, Notice it only selects the one at the front, and if I start moving it, it's only going to select the one at the front. So that marquee selecting is really important when you're sort of working in different views. And well, it's important all the time, but just so you can see why I'm doing that. So I'm going to sort of make that kind of sloped like that. Seems about OK. And then the back one, uh, slope is much the same bit less maybe okay that's fine and then I can see that there's a bigger wider section here than the other two are so um, I can marquee select again downwards bearing in mind that's going to select all those ones across there so that I'm moving the whole thing back and forth okay I won't go too much about that marquee selecting but that's really important to marquee select and then the same with that keep on referring back to your Reference image. Okay, so that seems about fine. Um, now I'm going to look at it going down. So I can see I've got the windscreen section, then there's just a tiny gap here, and then it goes down, and then there's another section there. So there's actually more than what I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the windscreens. I think maybe they need to be a bit higher. Pop that up. Then I'm going to get this middle one and bring it up to about here, okay, which is this section there, all right. Now, if that's the bottom of the car, which is kind of here, I need another edge there. So what I'm going to do to add edges in, I'm going to go to my edge selection, select all of those, okay, marquee selecting means it's going to go all the way around like that, and then I'm going to hit the connect tool, which is going to draw a new edge all the way around those other ones. Okay, so I can then move that down uh, to around about where it is. Okay, you can obviously take longer on yours and get it more accurate, but I'm kind of trying to go as fast as I can really. Okay, so that's kind of uh, lined up okay from that angle. What I want to do now is look at the front. Okay, so same thing, I'm going to go to vertex selection. Um, so a windscreen on a car isn't dead straight up like that, is it? So I want to kind of make that slightly sloped. Bearing in mind, at this point, we're only going to do one side. Okay, don't worry about the, the left-hand side for now. Um, then I can see if I go to my other view that this kind of comes out a bit, down and then out a bit again. So let's get this lot. That's going to go out a bit like that. fine and actually, I'm actually going to ignore that bit at the bottom for now I'm going to do something different with that later so that's okay so if I look at my car my perspective view it's looking a bit more car like um, what I might actually do is that top line is like dead straight um, I'm pretty sure that's going to have a bit of a slope there so let's do something with that let's lift that up a little bit and bring that one down a bit so it's a bit more of a of a slope there. Cool. Great. Um, so I've only done one side of the car. So what I need to do is I want to mirror that to the other side. I don't want to have to do something on one side and then do the repeat it on the other side again and again and again when you're working with something which is symmetrical like this car is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the car in half and I'm going to use a modifier to mirror one side to the other. So at the moment I can't really cut my car in half because I don't have a, a line of edges right down the middle so that's the first thing I'm going to do. So I'm going to get edges, select 
all of those middle ones there and then I'm going to hit connect and that's going to give me another line right down the middle which I know is down the middle of my car and I'm going to polygon selection in the side view select all of those so that's that's half of the vehicle selected you can see that in the perspective view and then I'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard not backspace that's not going to work the same way hit the delete key and then I have half a car okay that's actually what I want um, now I'm going to add my modifier now just a, a comment with modifiers if you um, add your modifier whilst let's say I had a polygon selected like that and then I added this modifier from a list it's only going to apply it to that one section okay this is where again where a lot of people kind of go wrong and it doesn't work you want to make sure it's select the modifier is applying to the whole model certainly in this instance there might be instances where you don't want that but right now we want it to apply to everything so I'm going to hit editable poly that means that I've just got the entire model selected now I'm going to get my modifier list um, and I'm going to use symmetry. Okay, so I'm going to click symmetry. I've added my symmetry modifier. Let's make this view a bit bigger. But I can see it's mirroring the wrong side. It's mirroring front to back. I want it to mirror right to left essentially. So it's mirroring the wrong axis. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the X. I'm going to change it to Y. Now I can see <laughs> that it's mirroring the uh, empty side okay so it looks like I've got nothing at all so we have this option to flip that so it's now mirroring the actual right side across to the other so depending on how you the direction you extruded in the beginning will depend on what you need to do here so it might be slightly different to mine um, but either way you can kind of fiddle around with that till you get it right the other thing you might encounter is that you might have a gap in the middle if you do I can click on this little toggle and I can select just the mirror itself and then I can actually move that mirror you see so I can move where it's mirroring and you might just need to move it in to, to line up down the middle again um, should you need to do that but you might not okay that's great so now when I go down into my selections see that it's kind of gone I can't see that symmetry anymore if you want to see your modifier happening live. Uh, you have this test tube here. I can click on that and uh, you know I can now see both sides. So if I was modifying this up here again, it's going to apply that to both sides. Great, that's what I want. Cool. Um, I also don't like this color and the contrast, so I'm going to actually change this to the clay because I prefer working in that. Lovely, let's see where we're up to. So um, I want to focus on my windscreens now. I've got this little detailing in here where I've got this little extrusion in. Let's do that bit. So what I want to do is go down to polygon selection. You can see on the left hand side here that one of the windows is essentially those two polygons there. I'm going to get my inset tool, inset that in, say about that much, and then extrude in about the same. Don't go crazy, it's just a bit of detailing in there. Okay, uh, there's a back window there. Again, we're not going crazy on it, we're not copying this sort of one-to-one, -one, you know, perfect. Um, but, you know, you could with the um, connect tool add those extra edges in there if you wanted that more curved shape there, but we're just going to keep it as one for now, that's fine. So inset, okay, keep it matching and then go in again. Cool. Obviously I don't have to do both sides because the other side is mirrored. Um, now I'm going to do the front ones and we are going to encounter a problem um, which I've kind of done on purpose to um, show you what happens here. So if I get these two and I want to do my inset, okay, to do my front windscreen, notice now that because it's mirroring that side to that side, yeah, I'm going to get this thing down the middle which I don't want. Okay. So I'm thinking, okay, well, I actually don't want it to be mirroring at this point. I want it to be one complete model so that I can get that detailing in. And that could happen at different points along the way. So if you don't want it to, to mirror anymore, what you can do is just right click it and convert it back to editable poly again. Okay, what that has done is it means that um, it's kind of collapsed this into just one model again. Uh, see, it doesn't have any modifiers on. 
So, but it's kept, you know, the symmetry that I had from before. So now if I get these polygons, I'm going to have to select all four of them, do my insert, I'm not getting that issue anymore. Okay, which is great. So let's do my insert and my extrusion. Okay, and then let's do the same for the back. Cool. So that's great, but what I also, uh, I, I want my symmetry to come back now because I'm going to still be modifying one side that I want to apply to the other. So we just re repeat the process of setting up the symmetry that we did before. So get half of the car, delete it, select editable poly at the top, get your symmetry modifier back on, should be the same settings. And then we've got our symmetry back and we've got all those detailings in the windscreen. Cool. Okay, so I'm um, gonna do this in sections um, rather than doing it all in one big long go. So just pause there, just make sure you've got everything correct. Um, at this point, if you've kind of done yours and you're thinking, oh, it kind of looks a bit wrong um, and you need to go over and do it again, at this point, it's a good idea to just, okay, restart, get it right, get the shape right, get the proportions right and everything, and then go on from there. So um, don't rush through things. If you need to restart something, sometimes it's better to do that to get a better final result. Okay, and then we'll be back for the next part.